Welcome, Welcome to DNA Live from the kiosk on June 20th, 2018. And we've got a great show today. Boy, it's going to be power packed. I don't even know how we're going to fit everything into the hour. I know. It's just, oh, another edge of your seat type of testimony yeah. going up. Amen. But as per usual, Father Tim, if you would yes. open us up in prayer. Right. Absolutely. My pleasure. So my dear brothers and sisters, wherever you may find yourself today, we mark ourselves the sign of our faith, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Well, God, our Heavenly Father, we ask you to send your spirit to be with us as we prepare ourselves and to celebrate this day and to, to have the show for all our listeners, wherever they may find themselves, that they may be uh, given the grace of peace and comfort and may be inspired by what we say and do this day. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. St. Expeditious, uh, patron of the Internet. Pray, Pray for, for us. us. Holy Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank, All right. you, Father. Thank you, Father. Okay, <gasps> so good. as I said, power pack show, but yes. we just have to share. So we're June 20th. So June 22nd, two days from now, yes. we'll actually be at Cap de la Madeleine. We're going there tomorrow because on June 22nd, 1888, that was the dedication of the shrine was on that day. And as you may remember, we had Father Luc de Sala, we had Blessed Frederick Yansun, who we have his first class relic with us here today, and we had uh, Pierre Lacroix, and they were all gathered after the shrine had been dedicated to, to the Holy Rosary, Queen of the Holy Rosary, and there they were at seven-ish, and Father Luke said, oh, I wish we would have had a miracle. And then it <laughs> happened. It was amazing. They were all there. And suddenly they noticed that the actual uh, eyes of the statue became lifelike. And Our Lady of the Cape, Queen of the Holy Rosary, was looking out over North America. And even Blessed Frederick and Father Luke had to go up and around and look at the statue to make sure it wasn't an optical illusion. And all of them have testified to it and documented it. So it's a, it's a huge deal. And of course, June 22nd is when our country was actually consecrated in 1947. So they picked the exact same day. So uh, we want to welcome, we just had another enrollee into the confraternity. So again, for those of you that want to enroll, go to catholicincanada.com. You go uh, underneath the flag and to the left, you'll see the enroll button. And you'll notice to the right of that, well, of course, the button is for our show, but also for the audio book, Your Mother, Your Queen. And you can listen to the account of of the eyes opening it's called she opened their eyes a little bit of a play on words and then to the right of that you have an actual webcam link so you can actually go to the shrine i love listening to that account and actually being at the web shrine or what the shrine cam at the web <laughs> webcam shrine a live shot which is beautiful you know i start my day off that way so yeah and it's, and it's fantastic and also with the opening up of the eyes of our lady it just makes me think about the hail holy queen when she mm. says to us when we pray turn your eyes of mercy towards us it just feels like that's what she's done to us here in canada i mean how blessed are we about mm. that yeah so I think we're still in the, the month of the Sacred Heart. Yes. So you're yes. going to share another uh, couple of promises before we get on with the show. Yes. So let's dig into some more. We've heard now eight. Oh, actually nine. I think we've heard now. So let's go into another two. So these are the promises of our Lord to those who love and honor his Sacred Heart. So number nine would be uh, on this booklet would be, I will bless those places wherein the image of my sacred heart shall be exposed and venerated. And I will give to priests the power to touch the most hardened hearts. How beautiful is that? Mm. And then ways to obtain the promises from our Lord. Let's go into a couple of more of those. We've got receive Holy Communion frequently in a spirit of love and reparation to Jesus through his sacred heart for all the indifference, hatred, and ingratitude he receives, especially in the Blessed Sacrament. Mm. Also, make holy hours of loving reparation and atonement to Jesus' sacred heart. For example, you could make a Eucharistic adoration for one hour on Thursdays in honor of his agony on Thursday night. And then it has here in brackets when he said, could you not watch one hour with me? Holy hours can be made alone or in a group or with or without formal prayers in a home, church, or chapel, etc. And one more. 
Consecrate yourself, your loved ones, even your parish church, and the whole world, etc., to the sacred heart of Jesus. Pope Pius XI composed a beautiful prayer in 1925 for everyone to say, entitled, Consecration of the Human Race to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. So there's some more ways on this beautiful devotion, especially during the month of June. Beautiful. So we're ready for our first guest. I think you're going to pop yeah, over Yeah, I'm going to do here. a little switcheroo here. Yeah. And we'll see you at the end of the show with Father Tim. All right. Sounds good, babe. Welcome, Cynthia, to DNA good to Live. Here. Good to see you. <laughs> so we've got lots and lots to share about, don't we? For sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's just dive right into it. And you've got some goodies for us. You were yes, on, Cynthia was on that pilgrimage that we heard about a couple weeks back with Father Dan Dubroy and That's Susan right. LaRoche. That's right. They had exactly. went on this pilgrimage to see Our Lady of... Buen Successo of the Purification, once known as Our Lady of Good Success. Oh. And we're having a really hard time with that title. <laughs> and to say it properly, you know, That's it's a right, different, exactly. different language than the English one. But you have brought us some treasures from there. Yes, yes I yeah. did. And she's got a great idea about what she wants to do with them. So listen up. So I have a, a rosary with uh, the little link there. It has uh, an image of... Uh, Mary of Buen Successo of the Purification. Oh, you did great. Uh, <laughs> I've been practicing. And then we also have uh, a piece of cloth that I got from uh, the Conceptionist Monastery uh, with, um, with a, a piece of the cloth that had actually... Uh, a little bit of a... <laughs> uh, the, the Our Lady actually wore... Uh, oh, my. So oh, there, my. oh my, oh there. my, oh my, oh my, oh my. And then also we have a, I, I'm not sure if it's a third or a second class relic of uh, Mother Mariana. Who is? Jesus de Torres. She is the uh, woman in 1599 that experienced the apparitions. Oh, and okay. had was commissioned by Our Lady to, to get that statue, the miraculous statue installed in the conceptionist convent so all of these items too as well we have we were very blessed if you watch the episode with father dan and susan we mm. had some time uh with mother mariana by her incorrupt body so i actually touched huh. all these items to to the tomb where where she is so um we want to give these away to the first three people that do a little research. You're gonna to have to work for this, <laughs> and you're gonna to have to watch uh, that show because myself as a convert, I'm very excited about the vision that Father uh, Dan brought back from Quito in regards to the restoration that Our Lady talks about in Quito and and the, the new mass and ad orientum and all of that. And, and so I'm very excited by it. So I'd like everybody to go back and watch that episode because it's really, really important. And the first person that writes through the um, Catholic in Canada website yep. sends their address and the answer to this question will get the rosary. Second person will get the piece of the cloth and the the uh, relic of Mother Mariana will be the third person. And the question is, Angelisa is gonna lead us in the question. Okay, here we go, everybody, are you ready? Okay, you can even write it down if you want. Here we go. What diocese is the bishop from that says the ordinary form of the mass ad orientum that Father Dan referred to in the June 6th, 2018 episode of DNA Live? Okay, there you have it. Go to catholicincanada.com, give us your answer, and they'll we will we'll mail these things out to you. How exciting now we've got these things that are, she's actually got brought stuff, these treasures to give away. Oh, I love stuff like this. Okay. <laughs> so now let's dive into your conversion story. Okay. Um, I just want to say, too, before we start, uh, when I came and had Mass uh, this morning with you, I, I couldn't believe the readings this morning because my conversion story begins with me as a Protestant fasting. And uh, for about four years, once a week, I would do a 24 to 36 hour fast. Oh, and so the readings today, the gospel reading was oh, yes. really so appropriate that uh, it was, wow, it was kind of another wow moment <laughs> <laughs> for me. Yes. And you also noticed something else in our window too at the church that you had talked about as well. Well, yes, because uh, I believe Father Dan is watching at home. Hi, Father Dan. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, above um, above the altar, there's this beautiful round stained glass window uh, at Blessed Sacrament. And there's the three archangels, St. Gabriel, St. Raphael, and St. 
um, St. Michael. And they were the three archangels that uh, painted the face of this miraculous statue that's in Quito, Ecuador. So I just thought I'd mention that because I know Father Dan's listening today and I thought he would <laughs> find that interesting too, that, yeah. that I did notice that. See, okay. all these things that can happen eh, on this day and your time coming here and all this preparation. So the scripture she's referring to is coming from Matthew chapter six, where it talks about, and when, and where Jesus had said, and whenever you fast, and what's the significance of the word whenever? He doesn't say if, he, say, he says when you fast, right? That's right, very important. right, right. And whenever yeah. you fast. Yes. That was the significance, right? Because mm -hmm. it wasn't the if, it was the whenever. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Father Dan always says that. That's why I remember that. So when that came up, I was, wow. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's continue on now. Your, your conversion started as a Protestant. You were fasting. Yes, it was after Olivia was born. It was about 2001. And uh, I'd read a book and I wanted to uh, fast um, because it was sort of a health thing I was interested in, removing the toxins from my body that we get from the food we're eating and, and all of the pollution that we uh, were, were exposed to. So I started doing a 24-hour fast, sometimes 36-hour fast, and uh, I really enjoyed it. It, it, it. I became more alert. I found that, that I had a lot more clarity. And so I, I started to get very curious about what the spiritual spiritual rewards were for, for fasting as well. Yeah. So I started reading books on fasting. And I discovered that it's a very powerful prayer. And uh, so I decided what I was going to do is I was going to uh, keep a journal. So before I do my weekly fast, that night I would write uh, my prayer intentions in the journal. Uh -huh. And uh, wow, I had some, the first few times I did it, I had some stunning answers to prepare. Well, let's show prayer. the journal. Yes, uh, Angelina told me it's show, show and, tell. and tell time. So I brought some <laughs> items to show and tell. So um, one of the first answers to prayer was, I was praying for my husband and I asked for, uh, for him to be successful at work and to be appreciated by his boss. Oh. So I, I, I entered that on December 28th, 2001. And the second time I entered it, it was January 4th, 2001. It was a Friday. And so Monday, my husband comes home from work and he goes, something really weird happened today. <laughs> so my boss came to the job site and he took me out for a coffee and he wanted to tell me he appreciates me. Oh my goodness! Isn't that exciting? So, oh my goodness! It was oh my really goodness. wild. Oh my and then a few months later, I noticed that my husband wasn't smoking. That was one thing too. Also, that I entered then was that he quit smoking. That's a big and, deal too. Oh yes. my goodness! And so three months later, I found out he quit smoking. And I said, "You haven't been smoking as much because he used to go outside and smoke." And he said, uh, yeah, I quit a while ago. And I said, well, how long ago did you quit? And he told me, and I, it coincided to when I was writing it in my diary. And he'll tell you to this day, quitting smoking was the easiest thing he ever did. Oh, my And goodness. I thought, well, because you had somebody fasting praying <laughs> for you, of course. And then uh, when, I was looking, when I was looking for my show and tell item, I came, I didn't write a lot in that journal because then somebody gave me a beautiful journal. Oh, nice. And nice. I was sharing uh, this with Angelina, kind of like a funny answer to prayer. So I asked uh, Angelina if she, she would share this part. Oh, with yeah. You. This is great. Okay. Show and tell. Nice journal book here. Okay. Here we go. So she's asking our Lord, and this is the night before you fast. This is when you this start is the night to do your prayer. I fast, and I had been taking voice lessons. I was uh, exchanging piano lessons with a, a voice teacher, and she was losing interest in the piano lessons, but I was sort of taking off like a rocket, and I was loving it. I was wondering if I should continue with the voice lessons. Okay. So this is what I was, I was trying to discern, right? So this is what I wrote down when I was discerning. Okay. So she's asking, if you want me to sing, show me if it is your will. And then all of a sudden she goes, wow, I just read what was on the top and the bottom of this page. Thank you. I didn't expect an answer so quickly. Well, on the top of the page, it says, I'm going to make it a point to sing more often. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and she's writing it out, you know, not even look at the top of the page, you know, until after she sees this. And then at the bottom of the page, it says, lift up my voice in praise. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You know, so she's like instantaneous answer to prayer. It was really pretty wild. I so. don't know. This prayer and fasting is sounding very <laughs> interesting. I'm telling you. <laughs> so that, that was in 2001. And um, 
And then uh, I, I think that's what gave me the, the spiritual clarity when somebody shared a Dr. Hans conversion story uh, with me to get it like right away it was like a guinness book of world records conversion i tell people because i remember it was the middle of january in 2005 i had gone to um uh a, there is a pentecostal pastor in the ottawa area who had a radio show and i i loved listening to him because i found he was he would talk about the devil and he'd talk about hell, things that you wouldn't normally hear from the pulpit. So uh, he was doing a, a live as a pastor version of his show. And I tried to get my Catholic uh, friend to go with me to this live version on a Sunday. And she had to go to mass. Can you imagine? She had to go, she had to, go to mass. I didn't get it then. I thought, why can't she come with me? Now I, now I totally get it. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I went to go hear him, and and, and uh, somebody, uh, when he was doing the live Ask the Pastor version of his show, he asked, uh, somebody said, uh, what about Catholics? What do they do? What's going on with them? And, and something to that effect. And he said, well, they worship Mary, and they do this, and they do that. And I just, just for the Protestants that are listening, I just want to reinforce this point. <laughs> Catholics do not worship Mary. No. <laughs> we, we don't worship Mary. So um, anyways, I started to get really, really concerned about my devout Catholic friend that I had met. And so the next time I saw her, I said, Trish, her, her name is Trish. She was my sponsor coming into the church. Hi, Trish. And uh, <laughs> she said, I said, what's this that you, you, you guys, you worship Mary and you do all these things? And she said, oh, Cynthia, I think you, you, you've got to listen to this. And she gave me Dr. Scott Hahn's conversion story. <sighs> And so I listened to that, and I listened to it again, and I could not get enough of Dr. Han's uh, conversion. So I, I went on the internet, and I started to look him up, and I found all of his lectures Where is online. That I show and tell. Show and tell. Show and tell. She's got it here. Okay, great. And you say, you check this bring out. that binder in. So I look at this serious out. business here. Look how thick this is. I brought. I, I printed off every single lecture of Dr. Hans every and it's in, in this binder. <laughs> and I can tell you, it was the middle of January, the end of January. I probably printed them off. In a month and a half, I read <laughs> almost all those lectures. Like it was every spare moment. Like the kids were little. They were, I had three under the age of ten, and uh, so it was every spare moment. I like I couldn't wait to go to that binder and read some more. Oh my! And uh, by March. I had butterflies in my stomach. You know when you fell in love with Dennis? <laughs> yeah, that that feeling, right? Those butterflies that get going. I I had butterflies in my stomach. And I can tell you that as a Protestant, this is this is what it was like for me. It was like I had all the pieces of the puzzle, but they weren't all turned all over oh. and they weren't put together. So what Dr. Hahn did for me was that he put turned all the pieces of the puzzle over, put them together, and I had this glorious, beautiful picture of Jesus. Oh. And I was just, I was just in, so excited. It was wonderful. <sighs> so it's taken me about 10 years to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're calmed down. Do you think she's calmed down? I, I don't think she's calmed down. <laughs> I think you're still as on fire, and it's, it's fantastic. I remember yeah. when I first met you, and it's my girlfriend, Joanne. Hi, Joanne. She was saying that. <laughs> You gotta meet this girl, Cynthia. She's on fire, you know. So she got us. She got us introduced, and I'm very thankful yeah, for that. Thank you. Me too. Uh, me too. So okay. yeah. So you you got you found yourself in the church, and then you had something pretty miraculous that happened with one of your children. That's right, with a with Olivia, um, and that happened. Uh, she got sick. She was born in 2001. And uh, when she was a toddler, I think it was the very next year, uh, it was the end of, I remember the time because it was the end of August, she wasn't talking. And I think it was a wasp nest she bumped into outside oh. and she got stung a bunch of times and it created a lesion on her chest oh my. Uh, in one of her ribs. But I didn't know that until the whole thing had gone through for four, five and a half years. But around that time at the end of August, we thought she was teething. But she was, uh, she would be up like every night in pain. So that's why we thought it was a teething. And I give her Tylenol and it's just like the teething that never end, you know? Oh, no. And uh, so by the next year, um, yeah, we were, she had uh, one of those, you know, for celiac, they do the, they do a test to see if she had celiac. We did it because she'd arch her body, oh. she'd arch her back and 
was always in pain every single night. Oh. So, um, yeah, after four and a half years, we went, uh, my husband and I, we were so, what's wrong with her? And the doctor didn't know. And he said, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I think there's slim to no chance she'll ever be uh diagnosed, never mind healed of whatever her issue is. He had no idea what her issue was. So I got very, very desperate. And uh, at the end of that February, I remember it was the beginning of February, he told us that, we went on pilgrimage to St. Joseph's Oratory. <laughs> and Olivia and I, oh. we, we knelt yes. in front of St. Brother Andre's tomb. It was actually Blessed Brother Andre at the time. And we prayed for her to be healed. Yes, yes. And I was praying for one of those, like, miraculous, like, you're healed <laughs> moments, right? But it didn't happen that night. So I was, I was very upset. And, and why aren't you healing my daughter? Um, so um, things started to happen, though. Father Joe Kane, uh, some, some people might remember Father Joe Kane. Uh, he did a healing mass uh, for this intention on March the 7th. So that was the end of February, went to the oratory. March the 7th, he did a healing mass. And three people that day said to me that uh, their arthritis or their husband's arthritis was worse than it had ever been. And I started to think, is this a divine hint or something? Oh. And the very next day on March 8th, some more show and tell. Yes, yes, yes. March yes. 8th, I printed this off yesterday. Good for you. So it was March, March the 8th, it started. We were going to get a storm. We actually got 56 centimeters that weekend. Oh. And so Friday, the storm was on its way. And I was shopping with Olivia in the store. Uh, and she started to get really uncomfortable. And so we got the groceries. We got her in the car driving home. And she was like, at this time, I think we calculated you were about five or six. And she sounded like a woman in labor. She was in so much pain. Oh, no. And... So by the end of the weekend, I started to suspect we had a, a few years earlier, we'd found a lesion on her rib. So I started to suspect that uh, it had something to do with that and rheumatoid arthritis or something. So I went back to the doctor that Monday. I said, I think it has to do with a lesion. I think it's like some sort of rheumatoid arthritis. And I want to see a specialist. So he sent us to a rheumatologist at Chio. And... Uh, we we were in consultation with a surgeon because he really felt it was an osteoid osteoma that the rib would have to be removed, which seemed really drastic. Uh. Um, there was a lot of things that happened in that year. But um, uh, a year later, at the beginning of February, she had her rib removed. And on February the 4th, 2009. Oh, and it, it was... Ah, uh, she was like a different child after this. She was like so happy. The interesting thing was uh, we got to the hospital to, for the surgery and um, they pushed up the surgery, which I thought was really, what do you do? I have people praying at a certain oh. time. You can't, you can't be moving up the surgery. But the cool thing was I, I realized afterwards that they it was moved up because the surgeon actually came to speak to me and my husband after the surgery right at the hour of mercy. Oh my. I that was that was beautiful. And then that night she didn't use her morphine pump. She she could have and she didn't. The very and, night of surgery. Yeah, the very night she had a rib removed from her chest. That night she didn't use her morphine pump. The next day she was doing so well she was to start discharged around noon. That what? night, the, the night the, I went to go give her her Tylenol, I, and they made a prescription of codeine, right? So she could have had codeine that night Whoa. if she'd wanted. But she, she says to me, no, Mommy, I don't need all that medicine. And she was just so happy. I'm thinking, you had a rib removed. Oh, that's <laughs> amazing. That's what is amazing. going on? It was amazing. And then she, was, she slept through the night, and she slept through the night ever since. She's been fine. And now so, how old was she then? She was uh, turning seven, I think. No, maybe she was seven. 2009 in February, you were 
Turn seven, turning eight. And how, she many, would have how been. many years of just it was five and a half years. Five, five and, and a half, half years. years of not sleeping I, through the night. Every single day, I medicated her. If it, it, it was Tylenol, ibuprofen, naproxen, you know, because we did try naproxen just to see if it was an inflammation thing in that fall before. And she was a normal child when she was having the naproxen. So we really highly, I highly suspected. I thought God was leading me on a path, and He wouldn't uh, let me down. So uh, yeah, so so we have a strong devotion to uh, St. Brother Andre now. I guess. Um, yeah, he was blessed at that time. So it was, uh, yeah, it was a year of, uh, okay. So now, you know what? So now we want to show you a live show and tell. Come on up, Olivia. You've got to see this miracle child. She's so beautiful. Come on up beside your mom. Welcome, 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 Olivia, to, to, to DNA Live from the Hi. kiosk. <laughs> so, uh, yes, you are so beautiful. Thank you. So tell us, what was this experience like for you? Um, well, I don't really remember a lot of it. <laughs> That's probably off. a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I just think it's, like, really beautiful that um, God used me as an inter instrument to impact mom's life and, you know, yes. to, like, you know, I just think that's really beautiful. And I also want to say that, like, if you're going through something like really difficult, like whether it's like you, like something like you're in pain or something, or someone close to you or in your family, like the Lord can turn that into something beautiful. And like, <laughs> yeah. so I just. You can keep talking. You can keep talking. I mean, it's just flowing out of you. It's quite beautiful. <laughs> no, but. Yeah, I just think it's really beautiful, and it's, it makes me feel very special. But she knows the story of the Seraphonician woman. I didn't. Uh, I didn't mention that to the to the audience. But uh, uh, a couple months after Olivia was. Um, uh, had her surgery. I went to uh, Lift Jesus Higher Rally in Toronto, and Tim Staples was speaking. And he was on stage. There was thousands of people there, and it was like he was just speaking to me. It was just me. He was talking about the Seraphonician woman, and I was a Seraphonician woman uh, for five and a half years. Because, and he was walking on stage, and the coolest thing was right behind him was a life-size image of uh, of Divine Mercy. And I thought, oh, the hour of mercy. The surgeon came out. It was just so beautiful the way it all unfolded. And Tim was saying about, you know, how the Seraphonation woman was begging Jesus to um, heal her daughter. And he'd go, no, not yet. <laughs> that was me. That was me. So um, I sort of identified uh, completely with the Seraphonician woman. And uh, I did eventually do up a, a video um, that I have on a website uh, that has the things that the Lord taught me through those painful, painful five and a half years. I had been reading New Age books. And uh, consequently, at the end of the five and a half years, those all got burnt. Oh. And uh, so I have a, 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 I'm very sensitive when it comes to anything that's new age now, consequently. And that's on my website. Oh, yes. Uh, Hellisforreal.com. Yes. Which was, yes. Uh, that, that was developed out of a little bit of um, a frustration with the lack of catechesis on these type of subjects. So... Yeah, I think Dennis is going to post a link to the website. At oh, the yeah, absolutely. We're going to post that for was sure. Was there anything Olivia else wanted to Yeah, is there anything say? popping out in your heart and you're like, yeah, I got to share this, you know? Like, how has your life been even living your life as, as, a, as a Catholic believer? Like, how, how is your, how is your life? <laughs> Can you say that again? I love Jesus. Can you say it one more time? I love Jesus. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Oh. Well, that's a perfect answer. Bing, 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 number one. <laughs> And uh, so how are we doing here? Did we cover everything we're supposed to cover? Well, we got a lot to cover mm -hmm. here. And then now I think you're going to be coming on with my uh, wonderful husband here. And I think you guys are going to be sharing. Did, sure. we, did, we, did we pretty much get everything we're supposed to get going on here? Oh, I was just thinking if you wanted Olivia to tell the story about how I embar embarrassed her at uh, mass. I oh. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when I embarrassed you at mass? I know, but I'm not good at telling it. Oh, 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 but you got permission oh. to tell it. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, let's do it. I'm going to tell that one. All right, all right. Okay, so it was about, um, this is February 12th, 2015. It was always around the anniversary. 
well, this was around the anniversary of when she had a rib removed. It was beginning of February. Oh. And I had read the gospel the night before, uh, unlike yesterday. <laughs> and uh, and the, it was about the Syrophoenician woman. So I went, oh, wow, the gospel is about Syrophoenician woman. And Olivia came to mass with me that day. Oh. And then I'm reading because they asked me to redo the first reading. Okay. And I'm going, oh. It's about when God took Adam's rib and oh, wow, it's about Adam's rib coming out, right? And I'm going, oh, Olivia. And I'm going up to do the reading. And I'm going, but guess what the first reading is about? Adam having his rib removed, right? <laughs> and so I'm walking up and then, and then all of a sudden I'm thinking, and the Seraphonician woman. And it was just like one of those Holy Spirit moments where I was just so overwhelmed. And I started reading the first reading and completely embarrassed Olivia. Because <laughs> I got to the part about the Lord removing Adam's rib and I started bawling. <laughs> People and I are saw their roses. They're praying for me. What's wrong with Cynthia? It's just about Adam's rib, right? And so everybody was very concerned after mass. But anyways, that was a that was a cute little story. I love embarrassing my children. <laughs> <laughs> and now, like, I, what I also find amazing is that your rib grew back. Yes. Yes. Like you're just completely normal. I'm fine. You're. Oh my goodness! Isn't she beautiful? She's beautiful, yes. eh? So is her mother. A, it was, in the pathology report came up, I don't remember if I mentioned it was an osteoid blastoma. It wasn't just an osteoid osteoma. It was an, a blastoma, which is much bigger and much more painful. But anyways, yeah. And that, okay. And you made it through it all. Okay, you guys are doing great okay. here. Okay, okay, now we're going to transition okay. to Dennis and you for a moment here. And you're going to have a little chat here before Father Tim comes on. Okay. Olivia, you and I are going to go. Okay. See you all later. Okay. Okay. That was, that was inspiring. Wow. Oh, thank you. Okay, so uh, you wouldn't know this, but also, Cynthia, you've been involved for quite some time with the Augustine Institute, Lighthouse Catholic Media, and, and now Promoting Formed, which uh, for our viewers, a lot of them would know, it's kind of the Catholic Netflix. And I just thought it'd be a great idea for you to share your experience uh, before and after the consecration of our country to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, which we referenced earlier, that the re-consecration last year. Absolutely. Yeah, so share yes, a little bit about that. I noticed a huge, after this was done, I noticed a huge shift in the climate in the, the church in Canada. In that, when I was doing Lighthouse Catholic Media before formed in Augustine Institute, I would have to go to mass and then I would corner a priest and then I would pull out all his teeth and then <laughs> they'd purchase the program, right? Lighthouse and we'd order CDs and everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what it kind of felt like. Right. And then after the consecration was done, I'd been doing formed for, I think it was about a year or so. I can't remember the timeline exactly. But uh, the consecration was done at, in September, towards the end of September. The 26th. And, yeah. yeah. And then in October, um, it was like yeah. I would plant a seed and boom, it would explode. And it's like, uh, like for instance, one one uh, secretary I was talking to because the deacon had uh, moved out west, and and so I was going to help her, and I was telling her how everything was uh, going to work and i said do you know about formed and she said no and then i told her a bit about it. it's like a catholic netflix and she kind of got excited and she said well send me an email wow. so i composed an email that night i sent it to her the next morning before lunch the next morning i get an email back from her she said i sent it to father already he's read it and he wants to get formed how do we do this and i'm like wow i didn't have to pull his teeth out it was <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it was really exciting. So for myself, that's given me such hope, you know, right. and, and I've loved doing Lighthouse Catholic Media. It's been such a great outlet for me because coming into the church um, and, and through no fault of their own, I, I, I just found that, uh, you know, it was a way to get people excited about their faith and to do something proactive rather than just sit back and complain, you know. So do you have any so, favorites on form that you kind of go to or, yeah. Oh, oh, I'm doing the sacred story now. And mm. that is absolutely beautiful. It's uh, an Ig Ig Ignatian discernment prayer. And it's uh, called the sacred story. And it's 40 weeks. Wow. And it's just, uh, it's, it's just uh, 
to, to help develop a prayer life of 15 minutes a day. That's all's required. And they have exercises every week that you work through. And uh, yeah, I absolutely love it. I think that everybody in the world should be doing that. Right, right. I think every parish in the world should right. have form too. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, so if you're in our area, you would go to blessedsacrament.ca. And then I guess there's kind of a global site. Would that be formed.org? Yes, it is? yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Right. And one thing I just want to mention yeah. is here at Blessed Sacrament, all of the parishioners here, uh, you have formed here. And right. so when this was, you were given permission to get the, the program and have it installed. If you had to buy a hard copy of every single program on formed, right. it would cost $30,000. So every single parishioner has access to a library of $30,000 wow. of really good Catholic content. That's amazing. Very, very exciting. Really? They said, like, the CDs were great and it was fantastic. But now that forms out there, I'm just right. like, so I can't believe the potential. Awesome. Because you can actually, it's it's accessible to anybody in that parish boundary. So right. if you belong to a parish, you can give the, the information to your neighbor and event. It's so easy to evangelize now. You just need a little business card with the information on it. And say, hey, check this out or point That's them awesome. towards something. Great. Yeah, God is well, good. Well, we wish you could be a little bit more enthusiastic <laughs> about your faith. <laughs> You know? <laughs> I'll work on that. Actually, I'm really toned down. Are you really? Oh, okay. yes, because I was brought into the church in 2006, so it's been right. 12 years, okay. and Should I can they... talk about the weather now to people. <laughs> it used to be, I yeah, oh, I couldn't talk great. about anything else. But well, thank you so much for being thank part you. of our show, thank and you. we'll definitely uh, have Cynthia's links underneath in the YouTube and the rebroadcast as well as we send it out. And now I'm going to ask Father Tim to come. So thank you. Thank God you. bless you. Thank you. All right. That was, that was power packed, jam packed. Absolutely. And we're, we're, we're going to continue this on because Father Tim <laughs> has something really, I don't think everybody would even know about this, would they? With, the, with what you're going to share with us. Meaning you had a priest day. And, yes. And I don't know how widely distributed this is. So why don't you share with us a little bit about uh, what you brought well, here? I just wanted to make a little comment about what we're just being talked about. So okay. everybody out there just know that you have just been informed about being formed. So get formed. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched uh, formed for the last two years. The first parish I was in in Niagara Falls got it. We have it here. Yeah. Lots of good stuff on there. You can watch a movie with family and so on and so forth and other, other stuff. So anyway. Excellent. Be informed. Well, what, what did you say? How did you say phrase that? That's a You've good. You've just been informed about being formed. Get formed. Okay. <laughs> they might use that. As I'll go ahead and steal it. All right. All right. Okay. You know, good. Pu public propriety. There we go. Awesome. So yes, um, we talk about the, this uh, today. Today, uh, His Grace the Archbishop of Ottawa gave all the priests a copy of this in French or English, depending on our language. Mm. And it's called Gaudete et Exaltate. Rejoice and be glad. Oh. And Pope Francis uh, put this out. It's an apostolic exhortation, basically encouraging us uh, in his writing, about, in this particular about the, the gospel. And what he does on the back is he uh, puts a little quote on the back, which is also on the front. I'll just read that. It says, sure. rejoice and be glad. Jesus tells those persecuted or humiliated for the sake, which comes from Matthew's gospel, 5 verse 12. Hmm. The Lord asks everything of us, and in return, he offers us true life the happiness for which we are created. He wants us to be saints and not to settle for a bland and mediocre existence. The call to holiness is present in various ways for the very first pages of the Bible. We see it expressed in the Lord's words to Abraham, walk before me and be blameless. So this exhortation is about uh, seeking holiness in the modern mm -hmm. world. And something that I've often spoken about and talked about is that we need to, by virtue of our baptism, right. be working towards and asking for the grace of heroic holiness. Mm. This is the holiness of the saints. Everybody should want to be a saint. Right. Anyone who says, no, I don't want to be a saint, right. uh, if, doesn't understand what they're saying by that. What they're saying by, I don't want to be a saint is, I don't want to have a relationship with God. Ah. And if you want to go to heaven, right. That's where the saints go. Right. Who wants to go to heaven? Yeah. Hands up, everybody. All right. Everybody yeah, has so. their hands up. Right? Okay, there we go. Saints are, as Paul puts it, yeah. the friends of God. Amen. And the friends of God are holy people. 
Right. We are created out of holiness, out of love, for holiness, for love. That's yeah. who we are by our very nature. Right. But God also gives us the free will to choose that. And should we fail not to choose it, it's consequences, right? So, it's like eating that chocolate cake. Yeah. yeah. Don't ask for the, the inches come right, after right. you've had a whole cake. Like, oh, I don't know where they came from. So, so, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so what, what, I, I, this word exhortation, like a, a papal exhortation, yes. can you speak a little bit about that? Like, what exactly? Well, if, if someone exhorts you to something, you shouldn't use an, a, the word in the old definition, but someone encourages you to something, he's going to speak to you about the benefits of that. So this apostolic exhortation, right. apostolic, in that is to say, coming from the, the seat of the bishop, mm. right? in this case, of course, is holding as the pope. Right. He is, uh, Peter was the prince of the apostles, and all the bishops are, are in Catholic Church are direct descendant from the apostles. That's what we call apostolic uh, lineage. Right. Okay. So an apostolic exhortation is a pontifical exhortation calling us to something a pontifical encouragement. So from the office of the Pope, he is calling us to this charism. In this particular case, it's the charism of holiness. That's what that's what this one that's is about. That's what this is about. It's, 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 it's easy to read. If you can get a copy of it, you can probably go to uh, vatican.va right. and download the actual document right. and take the time to read it. Yeah. And it's it's a it's a form of prayer. You can read a little bit at a time. Um, you can I'd say read it before you go to bed, but then your mind's be working and thinking <laughs> about it. Read it during right. the day, find some quiet time and pray with it. Light a candle, go to a specific a spot, read it in a group, take it to a book club, say this is what we're going to read. Right. And then have that conversation, especially especially in prayer groups. Have you had a chance to read some of it yourself? A little yet? bit a at little the beginning, bit? yeah. Yeah. I wanna have one I yeah actually take the time to pull back for a day or so right. and, and just spend the time reading it. I could probably, I could probably read through this in uh, a full day because it's not that long. It's pretty it's So it'd short. be a good retreat for somebody. Imagine that, <laughs> retreating from the world to do some spiritual right, reading. Right. Hey, awesome. holiness. Holiness. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Well, thank you for sharing that with no us. Worries. So uh, today we're going to end the show with we have to we have to pray with Saint Brother Andre. I think that's just going to be a great way to to end the show, right? So, my love, you're going to come join us, and yes, the Father's going to the Porter of God. Yes, yes. So, if you would end the show with this beautiful is, prayer, we have it oh, right here, right here. here. Yeah, I'm just looking on the other side here. Oh, there we go. Here's yeah. a picture of Saint Brother Andre. All right. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This prayer to obtain, obtain special favors through his intercession. Saint Brother Andre, we celebrate your presence among us. Your loving friendship with Jesus, Mary, and Joseph makes you a powerful intercessor with God, our Father. Compassion carries your words straight to God's heart, and your prayers are answered and bring comfort and healing. Through you, from our lips to God's ears, our supplications are heard. We ask we made a part of God's work alongside you in the spirit of prayer, compassion, and humility. Saint Brother Andre, pray, pray for, for us. us. And may Almighty God bless you wherever you may find yourself this day. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Let Amen. us go forth proclaiming the gospel by our lives. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you next week. Yes, bye God for now. bless. Bye, bye for bless. now. Yippee! Yay!